Two weeks ago, we listened to the Tortured Poets Department, the anthology. And now we're going to go through each song track by track and give you our thoughts, starting with The Black Dog. You don't miss me in The Black Dog. I love the storytelling. I mean, she's following this ex of hers, you know, kind of imagining what he's doing with his day and where he's going to the bar and who he's seeing there and imagining him with another girl. It's just really cool. The buildup is epic in this. The hook, whenever it's... Ding, 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 ding. I agree. Yeah. I love the storytelling in this one, too. The thing I like the most, I'd say, is just the way that she enunciates patterns of her lyrics and the way that she goes through the story. Again, just the buildup. I mean, each chorus gets a little bit more intense, and then it builds up into that old habits die screaming. I like that. The way she performs that is just epic. And that kind of all breaks out, and then she ends it on that soft note again that it started off with. Super cool. I kind of like the metaphors, too, about exercising the demon. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, looking at it, like, let me just, like, exercise this toxic energy or this past relationship. Awesome song. To me, this is like a perfect pop song. Catchy. Super, super catchy. Super catchy. And my favorite part is the whole drum fill, like in between the verses and like into the chorus. Just addicting. Really powerful get... vocals. Yeah. yeah. That too. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I the love the double meaning of I'm going to get you back where she doesn't know whether she's going to get back at him like revenge or if she's going to get him back as her boyfriend. Yeah. I thought that was so clever. And I really like that about the song. Just love the like the actual I'm gonna get you back. The main vocal there is just so powerful. And those are the kind of things that stick with me with Taylor Swift is just like those actual lines, like her saying that, I'll just hear that over and over in my head. That synth pulse is so cool because it it changes. It's like a eighth note and then like a sixteenth note. The way the speed changes mm -hmm. is just really cool. You gotta talk about the bridge on this. Bridge is super sexy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's why it's one of my favorites. That whole drop out there with that synth. Whether I'm gonna be your wife or gonna smash up your bike, I haven't decided yet. Yep. I, I gotta do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's awesome. On Not the back right. half of this one, it, this is the most pop song of all oh, of them. Definitely, yep. I would. If this was, if the second part was just the album, like this would have to be a single. For sure. It's just too much of a bop. I love this song. It's one of my favorites on the back half, if not my favorite song on the yeah, back half. Yeah, I love it too. I just love the vibe, man. Once again, going back to her like vocal patterns and the way it carries with the guitar and the wise man want. Just, mm -hmm. I love that so much. I'm constantly going through the lyrics and finding something new and trying to dissect this song and find what she's really trying to tell us in this song. In our initial reaction, I related it to the song Peace, which is where she talks about, you know, I wish I could give you peace, but my lifestyle can't. If you're in a relationship with her, like you're going to be talking about in the media, whether it's true or not, people just make up stuff. Right. And that's even more devastating, I think, than the truth actually coming out because it's like... How am I supposed to defend stuff that people just make up? Man, all those lines right there. Wise men once read fake news yeah. and they believed it. Jackals raised their hackles. Wise men once read fake news and they believed it. People take the, this one thing that's written about you or said about you or whatever and just run with it and believe it. And their yeah. minds are never changed, you know, swayed the other way. Yeah, I read that albatross can also be referred to as a burden. Her fame could be like a burden to him, which I feel like fame impacting her life, whether it be positive or negative, is an underlying theme with this album. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. There's so many callbacks to that with the relationships not working out because of that. Yep. Her having to do certain things because of that. The fans trying to change her life. When it's her life, yeah, yeah. So I totally agree there. None of it matters. All the stuff they say, what everybody says about you, really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We're still 
us, right? we're you still know a couple. You are. If you're like, confident in yourself, it shouldn't bother you. To me, that name is really just, I mean, she's just saying anybody, whoever you're with, because she's saying. Whoever's taking your attention is how I kind of took it. Yeah. Your hologram stumbled into my apartment, so it's not a real thing. So it's all imagination. She's imagining her ex with somebody else. It doesn't matter who it is. Yeah, I always took the hologram part as like a past, almost like a past memory, like replaying it in your head. First line always stuck with me in that way. Just like how you, how we replay stuff in our head, sort of. Yeah. One of my favorite lines in the song, which is like, you said some things that I can't unabsorb, which I think hits r literally really hard because yeah. it's like, yeah. Sometimes, These, sometimes yeah. people say things, you know, you just can't take some things back. And it's like, that whole setup with that being said and then like you needed me but you needed drugs more into the goddesses villains and fools it's like i've played all these different roles in your mind depending on who you are as far as production i think we all agreed in the initial reaction like one of the coolest parts is that like electric guitar but i don't i don't know like that so so cool it, so cool it just adds a little something that makes this song a little pizzazz This one, I feel like we were, we were so close to getting in the reaction, but weren't there. <laughs> we knew it was about a relationship ending, but didn't really take in that it was more so about everybody else asking about it. Yeah. And that is... It makes so much more sense now. Yeah, totally. The end of a relationship and how everybody else takes like, oh man, we got to make a whole event out of this. You know, we got to analyze this. You know, real life is not like the movies where it's just gonna, things just end. It's not always gonna be packaged up in some nice little package, you know. Why did this end? Like, media trained answer, like, I don't know, because my life was in shambles. <laughs> so, you know, like. Right. But of course, like, as a celebrity, you gotta, like, find a way to give an answer to something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is something that really everyone can relate to. You tell someone that a relationship, friendship, whatever is over, the yeah. first thing they want to know, well, oh, what happened? Yeah. They're not asking you, oh, how are you feeling about that? Or how have you been doing? It's always, what happened? Give me the details. Yes, that's <laughs> so true. That's all they gave me. It was one gasp, and then it was... Exactly. Tell me the deets so I can go spread it around. Yeah, this one's really cool. I really liked uh, the piano in this. The tone of the piano is really nice. <laughs> we'll tell no one except all of our friends. <laughs> that made me laugh. Like, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone except everybody I know. That's so true, though. <laughs> like, it, you find out somebody died. You, we, yeah, like, Instantly I'm so sorry. <laughs> what happened? Exactly. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, humans. <laughs> We're terrible. love this song me too i love this song too and there's so much hate online for it and i'm like it's just a fun song people the so nostalgia people like Kevin. alone makes this song right. so great people don't like having fun <laughs> right her and aaron definitely encapsulated the sound of that era 100 really well. percent. i felt it as soon as the song started yeah, that guitar riff is so early 2000s yeah. oh yeah all the references from then you know american pie grand theft auto you know, all the stuff you do in high school, you know, truth or dare, kiss. Mary, kiss or kill. Yeah. yeah, I love that how she is just referencing those just burning feelings you get, how they come over you so hard in high school, and how she's referencing a current relationship and how those feelings are just so big. Yeah. And just all consuming when you, you kind of first start a relationship. I didn't catch the name of this whenever I heard so high school. Like it's so high in my mind. Like she feels so high in this relationship. Mm. I feel like that's the play on the name. Maybe. Yeah, it yeah, is. Of course it is. I talked to her. We talked on <laughs> FaceTime before this, so I get my facts straight. <laughs> yeah. Shout out so high school. Shout out high school lunches. Shout out tostada high pizzas. Lunches. Shout rectangle out. pizzas. Yep, rectangies. French bread pizzas. Shout out Chicken Ring Day. It's supposed to just be a fun love song, yeah. and that's what it is, and it's, it's a bob. 100% fun. And I jam to it every time. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I like the song for the same reason that I like the Albatross, just because I love finger picking on the guitar and her vocals just run. Love when she gets in that pocket of melody. That just is so addicting. Yeah, the way she sings this, it's like the same cadence throughout, and it's almost like she's just talking in a way. Like it's just almost like a big, long run-on sentence, almost, mm -hmm. which is just interesting for her. It almost seems like stream of consciousness writing, almost. Yeah, just like you need to get it out. Yeah, some really cool lines in here. I hate it here, so I will go to lunar valleys in my mind. Getting lost in her mind because she doesn't like her reality sometimes, which is totally understandable. Right. What we talked about before, the whole fame aspect, everybody in her business. Right, that's probably why she, thinking back, it's probably why she wants to be in a time where there was no press and paparazzi and all that stuff. Thank you, Amy, to the night sky and the I really like the vibe of this song. Really? Yeah. You like the vibe? I the, like the, the instrumentation, sound or the, the sound, and I still like the message. I mean, she starts out, F you, Amy, but it ends with, thank you, Amy. Like, sh I like that story arc there where she was upset, she changed herself, and now she's thanking the person, realizing, okay, mm -hmm. they were part of my journey. You know, I probably wouldn't be who I am today without them, for better or worse. And she built herself around this image that she was the good girl, always doing the right thing. And then this happened where they released the video footage and it made her look like she was a liar and she was playing the victim. And everyone started questioning her integrity. That really made her take a step back and self-reflect on everything. It made her a stronger person, the person that it made her, and then the product that she produced because of it. To me, this song is about everybody in her life that has ever tried to bring her down or say what she was, that she wasn't, you know, just going against her. Yeah, but she I'm gets pretty detailed in here. I mean, there's the line about her mom. Yeah, I mean, I guess that could be taken as a way if she wishes that haters I mean, were her dead. Her mom, yeah, I would say she that about anybody, wasn't. I feel. I just really like that guitar strumming. It's got like a nice energy to it. Happier sounding? I'd yeah, say. totally. I look in people's windows, chance fix this one reminds me of Death by a Thousand Cuts. Not even just the lyric about looking in people's windows, but the way that it sounds, mm -hmm. like the way that it flows, which I love that song. So, I mean, this one, I guess, leaning towards one of my favorites. I this, love this. This is one of my, this and the albatross. I like how she leads you through this song, mm -hmm. just with her voice. Yep. Everybody that talks bad about Jack Antonoff. This was produced by him, and it doesn't sound like anything <laughs> on the other on the album. So just throwing that out there. We were actually confused in the reaction, and we thought it was Aaron mm -hmm. that produced it. And then we realized, I love the vocoder, and like the subtle vocoder on her voice kind of like comes in and out behind her, which is really cool sounding. As you put it, your trains out. And just the concept of this, we were confused about, I know, in the reaction, because we were like, A little bit, what? Yeah. But what is she saying? But it really is just her imagining this person that she broke up with, like seeing him all all over the place. Like mm -hmm. they kind of do that in movies sometimes where yeah. the person's out and about and they think they see him and oh, no, mm -hmm. just somebody that looks like them. Or... Yeah. Little things remind you of them everywhere. Yep. Even if it's not just seeing them, it could just be like a little thing between the two of you that you notice and it sends you back. Yeah. I love the production on it. There's like this cool like bass that goes right into the first verse. Almost sounds like a cello, like if you were to take a bow from a cello, like a, you That's know, like a thinking. running on a string, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. But it also is like that cool, like kind of noise push that you'll mm -hmm. hear in like more high, like highly produced music. But just a cool, I love stuff that kind of snaps you into the, I'm in this setting now, you know, yeah. like that's that things like that catch my attention, especially if it's just kind of on in the background or I'm not like intently listening, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that will make me pay attention yeah. you mm -hmm. know these type of vibes uh all across anthology like this song and you know a few others that i just love i would love to hear more and more of that like one lyric i really like is the i'm addicted to the if only I'm addicted to the if only. Yep. yep only i would do this mm -hmm. only i would have done that he's changed the prophecy 
to me, a lot of this goes back to the whole fame and everything, mm-hmm. and yeah. how that affects her relationships, and how even just not even romantic relationships, just regular friend relationships. It has to every single everyone. relationship, yeah. even business relationships. Who can you trust? Yeah, so many pleading, heartbreaking lines in this. Yeah, I remember we were all pretty brokenhearted. <laughs> Just yeah. feeling for her at the first time we heard this song. Beautiful lyrics. Hand on the throttle, like really just like, gotta keep moving. Whatever level you're at, yeah, there's just always just, it's like bred into us as adults, like you gotta keep going. There's this constant fear of being stagnant, I guess. Yeah. Pillar melody on this. Always get stuck. Super cool. It, it's interesting that it's called the prophecy, and then the next one is Cassandra, Which where is she was about, given the gift of prophecy. <laughs> yep, I think that's intentional. It's got to be. So they killed Cassandra first because she feared the. <laughs> got into researching. I got who I'm assuming this song is kind of based off of is Cassandra of Troy, who was given the gift of prophecy, basically seeing, and then she warned the town about the destruction, the fall of Troy. And no one believed her. She was unfortunately cursed with this gift. And but and also the other layer is that no one would ever believe her. Which Dang. is true of anybody today that claims they can see the future. People just write them off. Yeah. Like, whatever. like I can totally understand why they would have that mindset. And so then. this reminds me of how no one believed her about the phone call. Kanye she West, knew Kim. Yeah. the full extent of the call but no one believed her. They only saw what Kim was putting out because she had edited the video. I think it's a lot of different things, but that yeah. is Because we had also real. mentioned the when she found out that her catalog was sold without the opportunity to buy it herself. Again, back to the media and people talking, like this really plays into that as well. Sure. The truth comes out, it's quiet. When finally, when the full phone call was released, there was not near as much buzz yep. as it was when it initially came out and everyone was saying she's a liar. And then when the truth comes out, it was, I mean, there was not near as much press. That's what and I was no, And she's out. saying, you know, no one said they were sorry. No one, none right. of that. And that, again, applies to everything. If you pay attention to anything in the news, there's always the hate story, whether it's true or false. And then if the truth does come out, it never yeah. It's the same amount of buzz right. as Or if there's a retraction, line. you know, yeah. it's like hidden exactly. and buried. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just the state of society and the media and yep. social media. And No matter how much you repair your image or like, you know, it turns out to be untrue, like your, your, your brand or your name, it's still tarnished no yep. matter what. Yeah, that's what's the sad thing about yeah. it. Forgive me, Peter, my lost fearless leader. Reference to Peter Pan, never growing up. I think it could also just tie back to the whole, like, you have this image of this person that you build up and then they're not that, you know, yeah. you want to see them succeed. You want to see them get to this set in you know, this place in their life and they just won't. And it's like, you just have to like accept that a lot of the times it's never going to be what mm-hmm. the fairy tale in this case that you want it to be. She had built up this relationship for some time in her oh. head of what she thought it was going to be. And then, unfortunately, reality kicked in. We tend to create this fantasy in our head about, I do it all the time with everything, you know? And then it's like, oh, this is different than the 50 scenarios I've put <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to one of the songs from the first half of the album where she was talking about how once it wasn't forbidden anymore. Right. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't... It wasn't sexy. That, yeah. She said. <laughs> yeah. That's the word. I really love the hook in this, just the way she does it. Like, that stays in my head. Yep, just awesome piano ballad. Her the bolter. They quickly get into a relationship. Doesn't work out either because of their own self or just for whatever reason. And then she has to ex- escape and run away from it. And I think the whole frozen water thing is just her saying, you know, when I was in that relationship, I was kind of like in a preserved state. And then whenever I got out, I could breathe again because she does say something about when the relationship ended, I could breathe. 
Bolter kind of says like they just run away instead of fixing. That's what I was going to say. It, it's like fear of settling. You're not going to settle in frigid water. You're going to jump the heck out of it. You're going to yeah. get out of it as soon as possible. You know, like you're, oh, you get in this situation. You want to get out as quickly as you can. People have fear of commitment, especially when you've been burned in the past. Almost scared to let yourself slip into that like oh this feels good yep. that's the vibe which I got. is understandable yeah <laughs> yeah it's being We're human all a product yes. of our yeah right. experiences and you had said runway bride i think i way. did because that's what i mean that's what it reminded right. me of that's fear that commitment. That's, that's the thought. ultimate fear commitment right. that's being the like bolter, oh crap she bolted and, every time and the ninth inning two strikes like <laughs> ah i got a bolt sorry i absolutely love the hook in this it's got like a bounce to it it's very bouncy I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Started with a kiss. How do we end up meeting like this? Totally like classic meet cute. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. And then ended with a slam of a door over and over. Just talking about these different relationships. Way to go, tiger. I really like this one. I like the subject of this one. I really do too. Because I think this is her dreaming of i want to be a child again where i don't have all these worries that i have now where i don't have all these responsibilities i just want to be a kid have fun and be kept from all this bad stuff I, that's my favorite part of the song a secret we all vow to keep it from you oh, i no, mean it was the it only secret. point in her life where things were relatively normal right this is her passing along that feeling to the next generation of slow down and enjoy it. Which is so hard to do. Like nobody wants to listen to that. No, right. <laughs> the only thing you want to do when you're that age is grow up. Yeah. So Robin, we were told is Aaron Dessner's son's name. Mm. So I thought that was really cool. It was kind of a dedication to cool. his child. And also I think Robin is, you know, such a classic. The you know, I, when I first heard it, I was so. thinking of Christopher Robin. Me too. From that's what I, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's where I went. Where he was deep in the imagination with all his childhood Well, maybe childhood Aaron's toys. son is named after Christopher Robin. So this is <laughs> a, so it all works. I love the song. It's As a father, you know, having kids, this is, you know, what I want for them. I don't want them to grow up. Deer, drought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tied to... There's yeah, some down, cool drum parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just love the vibe of it. Me too. Underrated, folks. Now and then she rereads the manuscript. It's, it's the perfect closing. It track. is. It <laughs> is. But it's almost spoken word throughout. It's not really singing. Mm -hmm. What I love is that it really relates to her all too well music video. You had speculated that it was related to Jake Gyllenhaal. Which then I then tied. I'm like, oh duh. In the age of him, she wished she was 30. And made coffee every morning in a French press. Really powerful. Like her, what her dream was there, but then what it actually was afterwards. She was just like a kid. And couldn't sleep unless it was in her mother's bed. Eating kid cereal and her, her mom's mom. taking care of her and just shows really the dichotomy of the age gap in the relationship. Mm. And then it switches up at one point to really talk about making the music video. Then the actors were hitting their marks. Doing that whole music video, directing it, and kind of retelling the story that happened to her. And then she ends it with, But the story isn't mine anymore. I mean, it's your story, or it just means that she's not going to let it affect her anymore. That's she's her way forgotten. of healing is yeah. the way I take it. And I feel like that's also in reference to everything that right. she writes. Here's my pain. Here's my emotion. Here's my whatever, you know, and it's you're making it f to be consumed. People interpret it how they want and they can use it how they want to heal themselves. And that's why I think it's a perfect closer. Exactly. It ties it all together. Really beautiful way to end it. overall thoughts on the second half i like her work with aaron a lot like i liked the stark difference that we got production wise on the second half i don't know i just uh, a lot of the darker lyrics and some of the stuff she touched on on the second half i would say that i tend to go towards songs like the albatross and like i look in people's windows often just for that guitar and uh, i just that melody man just gets stuck in my head i like what you said about you know this being darker 
first the first half because that really aligns with the album artwork if you think about it mm -hmm. the album artwork yeah. is all black and white totally. but the first half was you know a white album this is a black album i love the visual representation of that kind of what you were saying earlier how the first half is more for the masses and the back half is more for the fans that she knows are gonna sit with it yeah. and go through it and not just listen to it once through because uh, you definitely have to listen to this more than once totally all right, so on to favorites. What do we got? My three favorite songs are definitely So High School, The Albatross, and I Look in People's Windows. Okay. So I have a three-way tie for my third favorite because <laughs> I cannot <laughs> decide. I really like The Albatross. I really like The Prophecy, and I really like I Look in People's Windows. And then my second favorite is So High School, Nostalgia, just for that reason only. I mean, I just love the nostalgia in that song and that sound that we talked about that he captured that just made, right. it just took you right to that time. Nostalgia is a mind trick. And then obviously I love I'm Gonna Get You Back because uh, it is okay, such okay. a jam. I'm glad you like that. I constantly am singing that one. It's always in my head. It's just a good jam. Okay, number three, I'm gonna go with So High School. And then I gotta go with The Black Dog. And then I'm gonna get you back as well. It's just a bob. It really I is. I can't hate on that. <laughs> it's a perfect, like I said. And I love the double meaning. It's a perfect pop song. If you guys enjoy Taylor content, we got a bunch of stuff on our channel, and we're going to continue to do more. We're thinking about doing the Eras Tour reactions on Patreon. Buy some more music videos. we got to jump into Lover, Rep TV when it comes out, ever. Yep. We still have some Taylor's version to react to. Yep. So make sure you subscribe. Let us know what else we should listen to. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Later.